Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to God. You have a Bible, and um, the print is a little small for me, but I lost my Bible. <laughs> I need a Bible. Help me, Jesus. I need a Bible with the print that I like. I'll get one. Yeah, amen, baby. Whatever you said. And look at this. Woo! How many know what this is? Sheke Tehasa. This makes me speak in tongues. Your country is uh, going to go through a mass deliverance. Don't shout too loud. It's okay. I just want to tell you what the Lord is saying. And, um, wow. I almost have a flag holder here. Can you still see it? No. Okay. Can you see it now? Okay, that's good, huh? It's there. All right, I'm, I'm happy. Let's lift our hands and thank God for the, for the move of God, what he's about to do. He's going to do something so awesome, uh, we're going to be shocked to see in the days to come. God is uh, looking for a man always to stand in the gap. But Ezekiel 22.30, take your seats, God bless you. Take your seats. Ezekiel 22.30 says, He looked for one to stand in the gap, but found no one. He found no one. Imagine that. Ezra was a teaching priest. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you watch my flag there now. Take that, take that. Take it. All right. Ezra was a teaching priest. And the Bible says in Ezra 7.10 that there was not um, an open flow of everything God wanted to say in that time. And um, who else was rare? Jeremiah was rare because he had to speak to a hard-hearted, stiff-necked people. And they didn't like it. Who else was uh, a wild man? Elijah. Elijah had to be sent to overturn, you know, the whole order of the prophets of Baal and come against Jezebel and break that whole system. And it was not easy for him. Jonah had to go preach to the Ninevites. He didn't want to, but God said, you're going to get there, son and arrange for a big fish to deliver him. Special delivery, lift your hands. Special delivery. Yeah, that's like when you order take out food and they bring it on the motorcycle, right? No, it's worse than that. He was in the belly of a fish. Praise the Lord. And he had two ways to come out only, from this way or that way. <laughs> Amen, my brother. Sorry, uh, sorry for the graphic uh, ex explanation there, but he only had two ways to come out. Thank God he came out the front way, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is still merciful somehow, even though that was a mess. How many, how many want to thank God you don't need to go and know fish anywhere? Praise the Lord. How many, how many are glad for that? God doesn't have to send a fish. People throw you off the boat in the water. Now you think you're going to die. And then a fish comes, whoosh, takes you to the place. Not an easy thing, all of these things that ha have to happen. Not easy. I was just at the hotel. <laughs> and uh, Mama, thank God for your hospitality. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for Bishop? She's such a precious woman. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, what's wrong with you? Somebody shout hallelujah. You're African. You're supposed to shout. Come on, shout, shout, shout. Sometimes there's too much shouting going on everywhere. People making a lot of noise. 
Well, you got to make the noise at the right time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not at the wrong time. By the way, let me say this. You don't have to scream at everyone for them to hear you. God can hear you just when you talk. People can hear you when you talk. Praise the Lord. We, we want to hear messages that have a, a substance and meaning to them. That a year later you can play the tape back and go, wow, that was timeless. That was powerful. Lift your hands. How many know God's going to do it right here, right now? Are you okay? Are you sure? I'm not sure. Some of you looking like... You know what? I'm going to get some anointing oil and throw it on you. I'm going to have an African deliverance service right here. I'll start screaming. I'll run up and dump the whole oil on you and see if you shake a little bit. Come on. Shake yourself and let me know that you're here. Come on. Shake, shake, shake. Just let me see that you're, you're here. I, I'm, some people... You look like a statue in your seat. I wonder how you are. If you're okay. Ukosawa? I don't know. I'm not okay. I hope so. Ikosawa. Me, I'm okay. Iko Barakiwe. Me. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Well, that's a few way. That means praise the Lord. So, God is... Uh, is, is very zealous to get things done, to break systems. And, and tonight I, I want to speak this, a very kind of a, a very uh, amazing word. Uh, I, I'm amazed at it. I hope I don't have to hide anywhere for, for after speaking this, but I'm going to try my best to give a little bit of it. I want to call this escape from colonialism. Escape from colonization. Lift your hands. You need to escape. You don't know you need to escape from some things. When you look around and you see the mess of backwardness and you see things that have not progressed because some people are holding people captive and suppressed and, and you, you're so used to it, you don't know that there's a problem that God has to raise up a prophet and send a prophet and an apostle or however, you know, to break this thing. Lift your hands. Let's pray in the spirit right now. I don't know. There's a funny spirit here. I don't know who, who has what here. Maybe you need some deliverance. But I, I want to feel the move of the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. Pray in the spirit. Speak in tongues right now. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. If you if you have anybody from the kingdom of darkness that's here, I rebuke you and command you to get out of here in Jesus' name and don't ever come back. Praise the Lord until you want to be delivered. You know, nobody can sit in this thing. That God's doing, like, and you're a devil. You're not going to make it. The fire of heaven is going to burn you right out. Let's pray. God never came to play with the devil. He never came to play with, you know, evil things. He only wants to cast them out. And I feel that in Uganda. I feel that in Kampala. I feel that, that the Lord is going to begin to break systems it's going to begin to break colonial uh, uh, oppressions, colonization that happened for generations. Look back, you had Idi Amin in the 70s, and then someone after that, and then someone after that now. And things don't seem to have progressed the way they could. I I'm sorry, but when the internet doesn't even work, something's wrong with your country. Lift your hands. Come on, when the internet doesn't even work, you can't even go online to feed your mind and communicate with the world. Something is wrong somewhere very much here. And that needs to change. Let me prophesy. Because God uses me to do this. I'm a city builder. I'm a nation builder. I'm a prophet to the nations. In 1986, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. And I wouldn't say this unless the Lord told me this afternoon to say this tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyway, I was at the hotel. Bishop, I was at the hotel, and this lady was walking, and she looked really scared because these big camels came right up behind her. They almost knocked her out of the way, and she, she got so bad, she went like this with her hand. What's wrong with you? I said, yeah, you should beat that guy up there and knock him off the camel. Running up like in the middle of the road with babies and one, two camels. I was like, what are these people doing? Praise the Lord. Amen. Anything can happen on a holiday, right? So, uh... Anyway, I thank God for the great hospitality. Nice place, beautiful palm trees. I have a view of the lake. You know, it's very nice. It's very nice. Let's lift our hands. Thank God for the nature. 
See, the thing about the thing about beauty of the nature, God made everything so perfect. But it's men and devils that messed everything up. Lift your hands. We want to raise the standard to get humanity up to the level of how God made things for us to freely enjoy and to have every beautiful thing. Let's pray over that for a minute. Let's pray, Let's pray right now for a minute over that. Jesus said what? Let it be on earth as is in heaven. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. On, in heaven, everything is perfect. Lift your hands. Everything is perfect. There's no poverty there. There's no sickness there. There's no broken roads there. There's no crazy people on motorcycles running into each other. There's no chaos. There's no confusion. There's no signal problems. There's no... Uh, broken things. There's no lack of things. There's no laziness. There's no untowardness. Everything is beautiful and perfect. And Jesus said in the model prayer, let things be on earth as they are in heaven. This is so powerful when you meditate on the word. See, we need to get revelation from the word. And I, that's an anointing that's upon me. I, when, I, when I speak this and I see this scripture, I see into it in, a, in, a, in another dimension. Like last night the Lord spoke about 1 Corinthians 2, 9, that he's already prepared greater things than we can even imagine for us. Lift your hands. He already has them ready for us right now. Amen. 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 Go ahead and clap and give Jesus a really good one if you're going to do it. Do it very well. Thank you, Lord. Last night after the meeting, the Lord spoke to me and, and had me prophesy to your bishop here and said that uh, the reason why I've come, a main reason, there's a few reasons, is to release this realm of prosperity upon you and your ministry. Mama, I pray and prophesy again. Everybody stretch your hands out this way, that the Lord is going to so bless you and honor you and favor you. It's going to be crazy how it's going to happen. It's going to be unexplainable how it's going to happen. It's going to be so supernatural how it's going to happen and manifest. But the Lord says, again, I'm going to do this thing. And that's why you felt me telling you to have my servant here come. Because this connection is going to release grace. And I feel it's also going to spill over to many other people in ministry, in Kampala, in Uganda, in East Africa in the nations of Africa, in the nations of the world, connections and a newness of something, another stage, another phase, another elevation, another uplifting, a, 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 an entirely new walk, a new road. And you spoke about walking with the Lord. Well, when you walk with the Lord, that's a good title. When you walk with the Lord, truly, he takes you from glory to glory. And you go up to higher dimensions. That's what's going to happen in this season. You watch, you watch, you watch. It's going to tangibly manifest itself. I, I had a young man who was the bellman at the hotel last night at 2 in the morning after the New Year's service, whatever time it was. And he drove me because the place is so big. They have to pick you up at the reception and drive you in these nice golf carts all the way to the hotel room, yeah? And the guy says, Happy New Year, sir. Oh, my God, I was a bit tired. I was like, yeah, Happy New Year. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And he wanted to talk. And then I said, Hallelujah. And he goes, oh, great. Bless you. I'm a Christian. And he wanted to walk me up to the, to the room and carry some uh, drinks and cake. We got something, cookies and chocolate, whatever. And some grapes, I think, some fruits. And bring them up to the room. And then when he, get, he got into the room, he ran to put the stuff on the counter. And then he said, sir, I want you to pray for me. I thought, oh, I have to now. He's here. Lift your hands. I don't have a choice. I certainly wouldn't say no anyway. So he gets out on his knees. He, he gets out on his knees. I'm like, oh, my God. So I start to prophesy. The minute I start to pray, the Lord says, son, I've ordained you to be a pastor. And you're going to be raised up to be in the ministry. He's a young guy. Lift your hands. He's a young guy working the job, driving the cart, you know, with the suit on, you know, like, a, like an usher at the hotel. And the power of God fell through with him like this. 
I thought, my God. I said, this is a divine moment. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Come on, let's pray. I feel it's too quiet in here. This is exciting. And then a businessman came up to me a couple of hours ago. And I just stopped. Uh, I was at the gym. And I went. I wanted a cappuccino. That's why I didn't want to you know, eat any food, really. But I just wanted a ca some cappuccino. And uh, I had eaten something before. And uh, so while I'm there, this whole family says, we want to take a picture with you. I'm like, OK, sure. And, and the whole family gathered around me, and they're taking photos. Imagine. And I said, what do you do, sir? What do you do to the father? He says, I'm an international businessman. I know it's a divine connection. I said, do you have a card? Yes. Gave me his card. He has companies in South Sudan, Nigeria, uh, Uganda. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. He says, I really want to talk to you. There's something that's going to happen through that. And we're praying for South Sudan. A another apostle came to me in, in Nairobi, Kenya, last week and walked up to me. And he said, uh, uh, wh what about South Sudan? He says he had South Sudan on his heart. So something's going to happen there. God has a way of getting you into new arenas, new connections, new networks. And I'm prophesying to you right now that that's going to happen for you. You watch. New friendships, new relationships, just suddenly like that. Suddenly things happening like that where you can't explain it. God just arranges it to take you to a higher level. Lift your hands. This is the will of God. The will of God is never for you to be stuck in any system. Now, as I said yesterday, I'll continue on that for, for a second. God wants your life to be a glorious place, but he also wants the nation to be a glorious place. And when you look back at the history of what's happened here, you wonder why, uh, you know, you, well, you don't have to wonder much about why certain things are the way they are, but I want to prophesy. My name is Thomas Banton IV. God's used me around the world. And I want to say this, that things are going to break and change here in this nation, in Uganda, in the coming days, very quickly. Come on, give God a praise right now. So this afternoon, the Lord told me, and I rarely do this, but I think I need to do it more. He's telling me that. Uh, the Lord Jesus appeared to me in 1986 and laid his hands on my head. It's a, lo it's a long story to it, but I, wanna, I don't want to tell the whole thing. But the Lord said to me, uh, my, son, I've, my son Thomas, I've ordained you as my prophet to the nations. I'm commissioning you. I'm commissioning you as my prophet to the nations. At the time, I didn't even know what that was. Can someone turn me up a little bit here? A little bit, if you can. A little bit. And... Uh, I have watched God do so much through this anointing to build new things. How many know, how many know the society of Uganda needs to go up several levels in commerce, in business, in trade, in advancement of the people? And I want to tell you, thus saith the Lord, God is going to begin to do it here. You're going to see people thriving in business. You're going to see people, and even you yourself, clap for yourself. Amen. Things are going to happen. And we prophesy against the oppression that's kept a system in place that the people can't rise. That's going to be broken in Jesus' name. You say, aren't we free? Well, not totally. Maybe a little bit, but not totally. Because there's systems in place that keep things at a certain place. But God wants to raise everybody up. By the way, if a nation is impoverished, in poverty, there's some demonic force that's really in control more than you know. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Oh, my God. Brother, you want to play something? I'm feeling like a real dead zone here. It's difficult. I, I, I need some help. Father, I thank you for the touch of heaven. It's going to begin to bring change. Amos 3, 7. That's good. Amos 3, 7. The Lord says, Surely I'll do nothing unless I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophet. 
Now, I like the word, that, it's amazing that he's called it a secret. In other words, nobody knows about it. People don't know it. But once it's brought out, Amos 3, 7 says the, the prophet will prophesy, and then that's the voice of God speaking. And then after that, verse 8, a lion has roared in the city, who will not fear? In other words, the lion's roar will bring an effect. Then he said, but then the Lord has spoken, who then can but prophesy? In other words, the echo to the voice, but the voice has to speak first. And then people can echo the vision. My God, I feel the on here. Yeah, the voice has to speak first to penetrate the darkness, to break the atmosphere, to break it open, to bring the message of heaven, to bring something new that is really like a secret. And then after that, woo, it just comes and the people begin to catch fire with it. And again, I want to say, you need to talk to everything. Anything you see that doesn't look right, speak to it. Anything in your life that you don't like, speak to it. You, the house you live in, you don't like it, get another one. Speak to it. The clothes you're wearing, you don't think they're good enough, speak to it. The relationships you have that are wrong, speak to them. The, the money that you don't have, call money in. The things that you see that are not right, talk to it. And don't complain about the problem and advertise for the devil. Speak the solution to the situation and watch it happen. Can I tell you, if there were a thousand people, just a thousand people standing in the city doing something like that all the time, things would change in the city. And then God, if God doesn't have a multitude, he has one person. He had Elijah. He has Thomas here. He has others. Someone that will come be sent to speak to a, in a society to break things open. And that's going to happen. I'm telling you, the word of the Lord, the breaking of a system, the breaking of oppression, the breaking of colonization, the breaking of ancient altars, ancient things that kept people stuck. God's about to break it and turn it loose. And people are going to begin to prosper. We see this also in Kenya. We see it in other countries. Country by country, God's going to begin to do it. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost that the favor of heaven is something that comes that's amazing. When you honor God, he begins to honor you. When you honor the anointing, that anointing will touch you. The anointing you respect is the anointing you will attract. And when you respect anointing, favor comes from the Lord and favor births prosperity. You can't stay poor or broke or sick or struggling or depressed or sad if God touches you in great power, lift your hands, let's pray. I want, that, I want that manifestation. And the Lord says it's coming. The Lord says, watch, watch what I'm about to do. Even in the next several days, even in the next few weeks and months, you're going to begin to see this shift and new things begin to appear. Last night the Lord spoke about clarity. He's going to make things so clear. He's going to keep doing that. But then and you're going to hear so clearly. The Lord's going to say, don't do all of that. Do this. Stop that one thing. Do this. Focus on this. Dive into this. Put yourself into this because this is where I'm going to bless. This is where I'm going to move. This is my will. This is what's going to produce. I'll give you one example. I have so many video messages that need to be edited and all that. We, we could take weeks and weeks and weeks doing that and you put them out. So what? The Lord says, make something new that's going to be relevant to the people that they can all be blessed. Focus, take your focus off of that and go do that. The Lord will speak like that and give you specific direction. In business, you could be doing a lot of things. And the Lord says, don't focus on that. Focus on this. This is what's going to work. How many would like God to talk to you that you can have perfect decision-making ability? You can make the perfect decision. I mean absolutely 100% accurate in something that the Lord is going to move in and favor and breathe upon and your life will just go like this. You'll be down here one day and the next day you're rising and rising and rising and rising and rising and rising. And rising. It can happen like that. I'm experiencing that. You know, I, I love this thing about preaching from experience.
Because a lot of people don't. They just tell like Bible stories and they shout or whatever and they say these things from that they learned, but they don't have any real experience in that. Well, but when God's blessing you, you can what you know, remember this remember they said, Such as I have, give I unto thee, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Now that was to a man that had problems in his hips and his legs. He couldn't walk, but it also means you to rise up and walk in your life to a higher level. But someone that's been touched by God to live experientially in that thing can then give it to you. And I want to tell you, the same anointing that's upon me is coming upon you. My dear, the same anointing that's upon me is coming upon you, the touch of heaven. That's why God connected us. It's being released upon you. I, I speak and declare over your life. You're going to hear instructions. You're going to hear names. You're going to get more words of knowledge. You're going to, the prophetic in you is going to turn up to a higher level. You're going to be able to prophesy things into existence and the miracles. People will come back and testify. Healings and deliverances, but also in business. Also in money that will come to people. Say, I, just the Lord is going to bless you. They're going to go out and get blessed and come back and tell about it. And also bring a big offering and a tithe also. Praise the Lord. You need to, when God blesses you, you need to honor him. Don't forget about him. Deuteronomy 8 says, remember the source. Whatever good thing happens for you, it didn't happen by your own hand. The Lord made it happen. But guess what? It wasn't just God that did it himself. He also used somebody to release it to you. You need to remember them. That's showing honor. It's being smart when you do that. Let's pray. I feel like we're just hope we're just sitting somewhere. Can we stand up? Can we stand up and pray? I really feel like we need to just step forward. Something else is about to happen and I want to see it happening. Being stuck is a tragic thing. Being stagnant is a horrible thing. And every day, every day here in Africa, I get prayer requests. People that are in stagnation, debts, problems, things that didn't work. Well, the Lord's going to begin to make things clear to you what to do and what not to do. You know, somebody comes to me and says they have a debt of like millions and millions. And well, they, they signed up for that. They did it. God didn't do it. They did it. They're in it now. God didn't do it. It's not God's fault. You say, help God. Yes, he'll help you, but you have to change some things about how you're carrying on. Another woman wrote to me and said, well, the, you know, she needs to get a different office, a smaller office. I said, you do that. Get rid of that big office. It's not producing for you. You're running up too much debt. Now you have a problem. Downsize it. Get rid of it. Have a little place you can operate from. She was able to hear and do that. And now I'm trusting God to get her out of the other mess of the debts. Lift your hands. God's a debt canceller. He, he doesn't want you to have any debts. He doesn't want you to have credit card bills and mortgages and car notes and all kinds of things that you can't pay for. It's easy to sign up for it when someone says, I'm going to give you the credit. But then guess what? You have to pay for it too or else you're in trouble. So let's believe God for abundance that we can pay cash for everything. Everything we need, we pay cash. And I pray also for whatever is needed for this house, for this church. It's just going to come supernaturally. The money will be there. Vehicles, equipment, uh, broadcasting, offices, help, all kinds of things. Whatever you need, God is going to begin to just turn everything up to a higher level. I, I hear that. It's coming. It's coming forth. How many are absolutely happy, 100% absolutely thrilled about where your life is right now? Let me see your hand. I don't expect to see too many hands. Are you there raising your hand? Are you absolutely happy? Like to, I'm not saying by faith. I'm saying everything in your life. Is it all of what you want already? Yes or no? See, she's not lifting her hands again. She's thinking now. She's thinking about it. Lift your hands. God wants things to change. 
Let me tell you one thing about the, about the God, the, who God is. He's the God of change. He's also the God of success. He's also the God of prosperity. He's also the God who like gives mysteries and then solves them. He's the God. He's the God who gives revelation. He's the God who gives healing power, deliverance power, salvation power for you to live a great life in this world. This is who God is. And when things are not moving like that, you're not seeing the manifestation and the experience of all these things, then, you know, you got to wonder where God is because he's not the problem. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, again, I love it. It says, eye has not seen, ear hasn't heard it, the heart hasn't comprehended it yet, the great, how great the things are that God has already prepared for those that love him. The problem is never with God. In fact, the Lord says, I'm already there. Whatever you want, I'm already standing there. In fact, I'm not, I'm not slow. I'm already there. I'm ready. I've been ready. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Nobody's waiting for me. You know, people say, the next person that says, well, we're waiting on the Lord, you, you should slap them really hard that, that they feel pain. I said, where did you get that from? That's not, that's not what it means. When, it, when the Bible says wait on the Lord, it means serve him. Because guess what? He's already ready. <laughs> he, he doesn't have a date next year that he's going to come and bless you. He wanted to bless you yesterday. Come on, somebody. He wanted to bless you last month. He was already ready. The problem is we, we have to get ready to receive it. And then something that's fearful a little bit, and I've experienced this myself, when you hear something so big about you, you yourself, when God prophesies and says something so magnanimous, so huge, and you're like, whoa, God, that's awesome. And you feel happy that he said it. But then this thing happens in your mind. Like, can it really be? Not that you're doubting what he said. Not that you're doubting that it could happen. But are you ready for that level? Yes. Are you ready within yourself? Has your confidence and courage been built to the point you say, I can handle it all. Yes. However big the thing is and what God wants to give me, I'm ready to have it right now. Yes. That's, that's the battle that goes on. And the minute you get, the minute you get to where you can handle it, then God will begin to release it. Come on, somebody get excited. He was already ready. He was already there. He was already ready already. He was already ready already. He was already there already. He was ready. He was ready. You weren't ready. He's ready for you to get ready. Let me give you another, let me give you another revelation on, on, on something that's been mispreached wrong. It's been preached wrongly. Isaiah 60, 22, a little one, that's you, that's us, a little one will become like a thousand, a small one will become like a strong nation. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Isaiah 60, verse 22. You know what people preach out of that? I've seen it on Facebook. Every time I see it on Facebook, preach wrongly, I delete that, co I delete that post or unfriend the person who wrote it because I can't take it. It does not mean, and it doesn't say, if you just can read, it doesn't say that I have a timing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me talk about God's timing. God's timing is now. Now. Remember the man went to Jesus? I said this yesterday, I'll repeat it. Je the man went to Jesus and he said, Lord, is it your will to heal me? Jesus said, I will. Yes. Two words. In other words, it was his will that day. It was his will after that, the next day. It was his will to heal the day before that. Yes. It was his will to heal yes. 2,000 years later, right now in our time. I will. Yes. I will. He never said, I won't. And then people say, well, you know, God has a timing. So explain this to me. God has a timing. So it's going to be March 30th, 2021 is when the Lord has picked a calendar date to bless me. That devil is a liar. He's ready to bless me right now. Lift your hands. 
in the spirit now is now is the time he was let me prove that to you with the bible now now we can't say these things unless we have scripture to to not just back it up but it, in the forefront it's like we're speaking revelation of the word of god because the word of god will come to pass not your will but his will what he says will come to pass you need to know his word and his will and have revelation of it. And when you have that, then that, that, that's, gonna work. That, that's what's going to work. Not just what you think or what somebody told you, but what he actually said. Hebrews 11.1. 1. <laughs> You're standing up. Thank you. Should I let you sit down again? But if you, could, if you start getting quiet, sit down. But if you start getting quiet, I'm going to come out and hit you with some anointing oil, like I said. Where's the anointing oil? I'm, I'm going to make some people nervous here. i wake you up. You're going you're to be like this all night. Pew, pew. You're going to be like a cat when he's licking his paw and cleaning his head. You know, you ever see a cat? They go like this. You go. You ever see a cat? You ever see the monkeys when they pick, they're picking each other, they're giving each other a massage, the baboons, you know? Anyway, you get enough oil on it, you're going to be slapping yourself all day. Praise the Lord. So stay awake, all right? Look at your neighbor and say, hey. Look at your neighbor and say, hey. That means you. Every time people sit down here, I think it feels like the spirit goes to somewhere. I don't know. What's up? Anyway. Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, now... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. The reason I say yet, maybe that's the TM4 Amplified. <laughs> that's the Dr. TM4 Amplified version. No, I'm not making another version of the word. But in other words, if, if, if you haven't seen it, that means you haven't seen it yet, but you're going to see it if you believe it. Praise the Lord. Now, faith is. You got it? Write that down. Now, faith is. Then right below that, faith is now. Same words. Now, faith is. Faith is now. What is it? March 2021 on the 30th day? No. Where'd you get that from? Well, you know, God has a timing. Why does he have a timing? Why wasn't it done last week? The Lord said, it's not my will that any perish, but that all repent and come to the knowledge of Jesus, right? It's not his will that you live in lack and poverty. He wants you to be living in prosperity already. Hello? Say amen if you're here. Is that right? Can you see that? Can you understand that? People have poverty because of ignorance. People have poverty because of lack of understanding. People have poverty because of curses that come from the broken law of God. People have poverty because of societal errors and sins and evil and demons that want to oppress and enslave people and mess them up. That's why they have it, not because God ordained it. So God wants you to get out of poverty when? What's the word? No. When? No. N-O-W. Faith is? No. Now faith is. Hello? Hello. Amen. Good evening. So you want to get blessed? How about getting blessed tonight? Lift your hand. How about getting blessed tonight? How about getting blessed tomorrow? How about... Yesterday, today, or tomorrow, whichever comes first, and that means yesterday. People ask me, Prophet, when do you want it by? You want it? When do you want this? I say, well, I, I like to say this. Yesterday, today, or tomorrow, whichever comes first. <laughs> Obviously, that's yesterday. <laughs> and then I say, well, if it wasn't done yesterday, okay, it should be done today. But if it absolutely cannot be done today, then tomorrow at the very latest, that's the way it should work. Let me give you another verse, because the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three, right? Out of two or three witnesses, this is, this is how things get established. Mark 11, 24, write it down. Mark 11, 24. Whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall. 
not have them. Hey, nobody knows the word. If you knew the word, you'd be mad right now shouting at me. No, prophet, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say you'll not have them. It says you will have them. Lift your hands. Kari shati gosa lasa ika ashito. Boy, I never saw people that had to work so hard to preach. Yeah, come on. I want to feel the anointing on you. Come on, stir it up. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Keep praying. Keep praying. Don't be quiet. Break out of where you are. Now faith is. And then he said, whatever things you're believing for, believe you receive and you shall have. Third witness. Thank you very much, doctor. Third witness, John 15, 7, said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask for what you will, and it will be granted unto you. Amen. Now this print on this one is still too small for me to read with my shades on here, so, and the bright lights, so I'm saying it from my spirit, from my memory. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, it'll ask for what you want and it'll be done for you. Mark eleven twenty three, 23, the verse before the other one, says, if you doubt not in your heart, what you say will happen. Whatever you speak to, it will happen. Remember Jesus, again, the story where he went by the fig tree that had no fruit and he cursed it and the tree died. And the Lord is very grieved about fruitlessness. Write that down somewhere. Make another. that. The Lord is very grieved about fruitlessness, lack of fruit, lack of fruition of things coming from his people. John 15, 16, another witness says, You shall bear fruit, you should bear fruit, and your fruit shall remain. In other words, have an expression of something that you did. Your, in other words, your life needs to speak. Have you ever seen these people that call themselves bishops and apostles, but they've done nothing? I take the title from them in Jesus' name. I put them as a pastor in my phone. You say, bishop, apostle, what? Where's your ministry, man? What have you done? Can we know you and see that exploits have been done through you around the world? Praise God. I really thank God. I'm very humbled by the fact that God uses me. I know you feel the same way. The fact that God would use us, my God. But if you look everywhere in the world, you see my footprints, my fingerprints, my voice prints. Lift your hands. Come on. It's tangible. Go back and see. Jesus even said, don't just believe what I say. Look at the works. They speak of me, of my anointing, of my uh, office in God. So don't try to call yourself an apostle if you're not one. By the way, the real apostles that I know, they never call themselves apostle. You could call them doctor, brother, pastor. They're happy with it. They don't care. Just spell their name right on the check when you're giving up. <laughs> when you're writing a check, just spell their name right. <laughs> don't misspell the name because the bank can't take it the wrong name. Praise the Lord. They don't care about the title at all, but they're doing the works. And when you look at them, you say, that's a real apostle. Lester Sumrall would never let anybody call him apostle. Mike Murdoch doesn't go by the title apostle, my dear friend, my beloved mentor, one of them. Doesn't go by the title. You could call him doctor. You call him, he's not really a pastor, you know. Otherwise, they just use their name, and their name speaks volumes for what they've done. They don't need this title thing. So I don't know what's wrong with the church, okay? I, I want to tell people, you say you're an apostle. Why don't we just call you pastor, and let's see the work of the pastorhood, the pastorship on you, that people are getting blessed and fed. You're caring for a lot of people. Then maybe one day you'll have a lot of churches, and then maybe we'll say that's a real apostle because we see the works. The marks of the apostle, the fruits of the apostle. We, we know someone's a prophet because they prophesied so many things and the things have happened. What's come out of their mouth was really by the anointing of God. Then you could say that's a real prophet. Amen. Amen. But all this other stuff I don't understand. So let's humble ourselves and just thank God that he's used us, he's using us. 
that will continue to use us, but we need to be right in the middle specifically of what he's telling us to do. I, I'm really glad that the revelation I'm seeing by uh, observing the climate here in Kampala, looking around and I'm seeing a lot of things, I'm getting a lot of revelation, things we need to pray. Let, let me tell you what the Lord put on my heart. I, I believe we need to have a, a, a conference for leaders, maybe business people, but also like let, let's start with the pastors and the preachers and just put the fire on them and teach them some things that they can begin to wreck the system that has kept people captive. I feel that that can happen. And uh, there's a lot of people that want to see us and connect. I don't know how, how time is going to work out for that. But um, we, we need to see that kind of thing, that God can release his fire and the right way of thinking and doing it through a group of people. And then they can set the whole system ablaze. They can change and break through. The whole society can begin to change. Do you know God can rescue millions of people because of the anointing on your life? Do you know God can change the situations for millions of people and they don't even know how it happened? It's because the anointing of God was on somebody. Lift your hands. You better ask God for his anointing, not for something that he's not called you to do. You need to hear exactly, specifically, what he's assigned for you to do. The specific thing that nobody else can do it like you do it. My God. Nobody else can do it like you can do it. That's where you'll find success. And by the way, the Lord said this year is going to be the year of success. That's what he said to me. The year of success. He's even like putting it in people's names. So you can claim that here in Uganda. Like people have done in Kenya very well. They say, I'm putting success in my name as a middle name. People in America are doing it. They're writing me. Uh, one of my administrators in America, in our ministry, is wrote that she's put it as the third name in her name, like her first name, her middle name, then success, and then her last name. She says, I'm taking to that. And what is success? Success is fulfilling the divine mission. Success in the kingdom, in our life in the kingdom, is fulfilling the divine mandate of what he's telling us to do. And when we're doing things his way, God will begin to bless us. He'll begin to empower us. He'll begin to show us favor. He'll begin to prosper us. Come on. We'll begin to flourish. Everything that we're doing will begin to work right. Everything will happen well. Things will go well. Remember said it, we say it shall be well with thee, it shall be well with you. Well, the Bible says when you walk with the Lord, walking with the Lord, here it is again, things will begin to progress well for you in your life. And that's the title of this conference, isn't it? Walking with the Lord. When you begin to walk with the Lord, things will begin to progress well in your life. Things will begin to go well for you. Now, well, W-E-L-L, -L, comes from the root word wheel, W-E-A-L, an old English word. And the word W-E-A-L, wheel, is the root word for wealth. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Come on, get excited and pray over that. Well, wheel, wealth. They go together. Come on, lift your hands and pray right now. Third John 2 said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, be and healthy, even as your soul prospers. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. That's what the old man John said. I, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Jesus said in John 8, 32, he said, If you, you, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, 31, the verse before that said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And, this you, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And truth is even one of the names and attributes of Jesus himself. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So we need to dive headlong into that. I'm telling you, when you're walking with God, when you're walking with the Lord, you can't stay poor. Lift your hands. You can't. You can't stay in poverty. You can't stay miserable. You can't stay sick and frustrated. You can't stay like in a state of not knowing what to do and having a sharp mind 
And another thing we need to receive is the brilliance of God. A few weeks ago, the Lord spoke a creative word through me in, in a conference we were doing in, in Nairobi, Kenya. And the Lord said, brilliance. He said the word brilliance. And I thought, God's brilliance. The Lord said, no, don't say my brilliance, because then people will just think that's just for me. It's not for them. He said, speak this word over the people, brilliance. I'm speaking over you right now, brilliance of thought, brilliance of imagination, brilliance, that you'll become brilliant by the touch of God. And when that happens, guess what? Things begin to shift upward for you. Everything begins to change. Everything begins to change for the better. John said, I want you to prosper. Didn't he say it? Third John 2, I want you to prosper above everything else. King James says wish, New King James says pray, New International Version says desire. So if we use all those three main versions, we can take the verse and make it like this, from the different translations, from the uh, different versions. King James, New King James, NIV. Uh, I, pray, I, I, I wish, I pray, and I desire that you prosper above everything else. Lift your hands. Above all things that you prosper. God never said, I want you to be poor. Something else I want to rebuke, uh, okay? In Christendom, people seem to love poverty and misery for some reason. I don't. I don't enjoy it at all. I don't enjoy bad things. I don't enjoy broken things. I don't enjoy messy things. I don't enjoy poor things at all. I don't enjoy it. And I never saw a law in the earth or even from heaven that that says I have to like it. No, it's not that. I, you can't find it in the scripture. I haven't found it. You know, like when something's broken, you have to get excited and say, ha, ah, I love that because I'm a Christian, so I'm going to be in the midst of that. Well, who told you that? You need to go there, yeah, and you need to change it. Come on, somebody. You need to change it and change the situation. Now you're really helping people. That's the power of the gospel. To help people get out of situations that are messed up. Lift your hands. Let's pray over there. Come on, pray to the Holy Ghost. I want to feel you work with me on this. Kabro shakari tola. Change that to it. It's boring. Change it to something nice. Let's pray to the Holy Ghost. Ka. Shekarahate. I'm anointed. I'm praying you get anointed. I said I'm anointed here. I'm praying you get anointed with fire. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Somebody has a down and out, you know, situation, and people go, well, you know, you're supposed to like hug them and, you know, embrace that. And yeah, you hug them and love them to get them out of it. That's the will of God. Not to leave them there. And thank God for people that can minister to the poor and help them. We do also. We love, we love doing it. But the gospel to the poor is that you don't have to be poor anymore. The message to someone afflicted, Jesus says, I don't want you to be afflicted. You need to be afflicted no more. Lift your hands. God, it is shaking. The affliction needs to turn around. Now, if you see things that are messed up, did God ordain that? Was it God's idea that things be a mess? No, of course not. So why do we leave them that way? Jesus said again, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. That's my will. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, everything's perfect. Lift your hands. Let's receive that heavenly glory right now. Oh, Lord, thank you for the psalmists and the minstrels that are coming. Thank you for the teams of people. Thank you for the prayer warriors. Thank you for the preachers. Thank you for the business people. Thank you for people in government being touched by the Holy Ghost and fire. Thank you for politicians in Africa getting saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're seeing it happen. Thank you for men that are going to be in government, that are going to be truly anointed. And Lord, any system that you've not ordained, 
Let it be broken now in Jesus' name. Let the nations go free in Jesus' name. I was just reading an article on the way here in the car, and the traffic was so bad, so it delayed our coming. It was really rough, but we, we got here. How many thank God we got here? We made it. How many thank God? How many thank God we got here? We made it anyway. But the Lord uh, had me see this, and I, I wrote, I reposted. I said, I hope it's true. It, it was something about Sweden up in Europe who's been attacked by, you know, uh, those refugees coming in there with their craziness and doing all kinds of things, raping people and doing all kinds of uh, criminal acts. And, and, I, and I've always prayed for that country. I've been praying for them that, that God would raise up strong political government there. Amen. That they won't allow this kind of stuff. They'll take them and say, you know, if you're going to act that way here, we're going to take you to the border and kick you over the edge, and you can go back to where you came from and act like that, but you're not going to do it here. Lift your hands. We need people that are also in government that are not there to steal money. They don't run for office so they can get in there so they can just steal the money of the nation and the people. This has been happening in Kenya. I don't know about here, but I mean, I don't know much about how it goes on here. But uh, we saw in Zimbabwe, you know, an absolute rape of the nation by the leader, Mugabe. And the people were starving. Kenya, the roads are not done. The projects are not done. They have to bring foreigners in now to do things because people that have been stealing money. And the Lord had me prophesy they're going to be arrested and prosecuted. Lift your hands. And they're going to be run out of office. We're seeing now the arrest of several government people in Kenya. It's happening. It's a move of heaven. God wants to change things. I didn't come from America or Europe or wherever I'm traveling in the world and living, you know, moving, doing so many things in the world to come here just to be here, to have a nice little ministry or a nice little church. We want to cause change. And I pray this becomes the mandate of every person in the ministry, that your life will be anointed. Come on, lift your hands. Let's, your life will be filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost and everything you begin to put your attention toward will begin to change for the better. This is the gospel. Are, are you learning anything tonight? Are you getting blessed? Are you, are you getting blessed yet? Are you learning anything? Lift your hands. The power of the gospel is not to leave things the way they are. It's to see them bring change to every adverse situation. Just pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Kari Tasha Kayoto. Korara Shekehetelo. Shukurahari Tiki Saka. Come on, somebody, I need a couple of intercessors just to get out of your seat and walk around a little bit and just stir up the place just for two minutes and I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm not done, but I feel we just need to transition. And uh, we'll pick it up in the next session. Just I, let me have a couple of intercessors. Just get up out of your seat. Begin to walk around and pray. Just walk around. Just walk around here. And let's turn this into a little prayer meeting right now. Uh, a big prayer meeting, actually. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost and fire with what you've heard. And the, the solution, the change, the advancement of the kingdom is going to happen here. It's going to infiltrate the government. It's going to infiltrate the business world. It's going to infiltrate the churches. It's going to infiltrate every place that we see and think of and pray over. And the Lord says, I'm breaking the systems that have kept people captive. The colonization, the colonialism, the old ways, the things that have been set in motion that kept people subservient. No, you need to rise up now and be the king the queen if you're a lady, the priest, the priestess if you're a woman, the priest, the, the priest of the thing, the king, the royal person in the earth. And a, can I tell you something about a royal person? A royal person never lives a poor life. They have palaces, they have wealth, they have riches. They have systems that they work with that are on a very high level. And the Lord said, that's you. You are my royalty, my church, my people. Yeah. My church and my people. God says, you are my royalty in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew the Fourth. Let's keep praying right now, and I'll talk to you in the next, in the next session. Love.